Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Survivor Series. My name is Brendan Plays, and tonight it is a battle for survival. And it's no more prevalent than in this match right here. We're kicking it off with the Animal Batista against Chris Jericho one on one in a no holds barred match. The winner stays on Raw, the loser must leave. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do want to watch a specific matchup tonight, make sure you check out the description down below where you can click on the timestamp and go ahead and watch any match you want. Make sure you also check out our sponsor, Loot Crate, where you can sign up to the brand new WWE Slam Crate and you can get yourself 10% off by using the code PLAYS. Check out the description down below for the link to that. So tonight, Batista and Chris Jericho, no holds barred. They finally settled the score and this rivalry began when this... This, well, it seemed like unstoppable tag team split up because they both wanted the same thing and that was the WWE Championship. Chris Jericho, Batista, they both know that there can only be one veteran around here. Batista challenging Jericho to this one. He knows that his time is running out. His chances of becoming a world champion again one day are getting slimmer and slimmer as each day goes on. Both Jericho and Batista failed to get the victory at the Hell in a Cell peak review where Batista actually hit the Batista bomb on Chris Jericho. Finn Balor swooped in for the steal and got the victory. So realistically, Batista's pretty filthy about it. He feels as though he should be champion right now, but that's not the case. Chris Jericho still stands in his way. And our new general manager for Raw, Christian, deciding to pin these two against one another and basically fight it out to the death. One man will survive, one man will fall and be gone. So here we go, we're about to kick off Survivor Series. Batista and Chris Jericho one on one, and straight away Batista with a strong start with a swinging neck breaker there onto Chris Jericho. Batista following it up nicely as well, gonna continue to wear down Chris Jericho, an early hot start here for Batista. He knows if he's gonna keep his spot here on Raw, he has to come out of the box very, very strong. And of course, if you have not already, make sure you do check out our pre-show where we had a couple of big matches on there. And you guys, if you haven't already, make sure you check it out. You will not be disappointed at all as Jericho countering back there. It takes down Batista off of his feet. Well, tonight we find out which five superstars will be safe from Raw and SmackDown. The upcoming draft next week will see three superstars from Raw and SmackDown head to the other brand. And, of course, two extra picks will be available depending on who wins our matchup later tonight between Samoa Joe and Rusev and also the winner of the ratings battle. Well, right now, as it stands, Batista stopping away here on Jericho. Good start here from Batista. As far as we know, Christian obviously has a lot of animosity between himself and Jericho. Christian has no plans on keeping Jericho on Raw. And as far as we know as well, there really hasn't been much interest from Edge in re-signing Batista and getting him back over to SmackDown. So, potentially at the end of this one, this, regardless of the result, I don't think anyone is safe. If Batista wins, there's no doubt about it. He'll probably be staying on Raw. His contract will be guaranteed, and he'll be sticking around. But if Jericho wins, well, Christian hasn't really, you know, offered Jericho much of a chance to really stick around beyond that. It's a potential that Jericho could be heading to SmackDown regardless. If, uh, well, Edge picks Jericho in the draft. And obviously Jericho's had so much success for Edge last year on SmackDown, so there's a very good chance that Edge may go in that direction again and try and make Jericho one of his top 10 names one more time as an elbow strike there by Jericho and takes down Batista. That baseball bat could potentially be coming into play right now. Batista getting it out from underneath the ring. Big clothesline for Batista. So, as we know, one person will be leaving the brand. Now, will that person get picked up from the other brand? Will Batista or Jericho, the loser of this one, go to SmackDown? Or will they be avoided? As far as you know, Edge not really interested in Batista too much. Potentially Jericho could get a gig if he loses here tonight on SmackDown. So this could be a must-win match for Batista right here. Jericho could be headed to SmackDown regardless. Both these guys are veterans, and having two veterans on the roster is difficult for a general manager to manage. Because obviously he wants to give the younger guys on his roster a chance to really uh, thrive and become stars of tomorrow. But you also want to treat your veterans, the guys who've been around and got it done in the past. You want to treat them right. 
but you want to, you want that balance. And having two guys like Batista and Jericho on the one show just hasn't really proven to be much of a balance as a tag team, definitely. But certainly as singles competitor, uh, it's kind of putting the balance a little bit out of whack. Batista now, look out, running power slam and takes down Jericho. And the power by, behind that from Batista has really put the pressure on Jericho here. Batista now. He's heading to the top of the rope. I'm not sure what this is about. He doesn't really go up top too much. Jericho is to the outside of the ring. Batista thinking about it. Turns around. Here he comes. Yes. Landing on Jericho. And that's a high risk maneuver there from Batista. But that's the type of move that Batista needs to use to save his job here. He knows his career is potentially on the line. Risking it all right there to try and get this win. Jericho now. Attempted suplex. Couldn't quite get it. Batista picks up Jericho again by the throat and launches him down. And a good start here from Batista. The momentum certainly in his favor. And if he can continue this trend, he's going to be hard to stop from here. You know, this one will probably get very physical between the two. No holds barred. The rule book is thrown out the window. This is why these two have been able to battle outside the ring for so long. Jericho now finally gets the suplex he's been looking for. Vertically taking down Batista. The rule book thrown out the window. So that baseball bat, as you can see in your bottom screen, that can be used at any time. And it's absolutely fine as Batista again. And half Nelson just launching Jericho, nearly hitting the steel steps. That would have certainly hurt Jericho, no doubt. Batista now just going to toss Jericho away. You see Batista though moving a little slowly. Which uh, certainly is not a good sign for him. He's kind of come out of the box very, very quickly. Can he maintain that pressure and that momentum? Belly to belly slam. And you can see down on one knee again. So Batista might need to try and put this one away pretty early. Seems as though he's running out of steam. Scoop slam there by Jericho. Jericho getting Batista back to his feet now. Big right hand. And again, Jericho might be looking for that suplex. Up and down Batista goes. Jericho in control here. He's come back. He was a difficult time for him. But he's been able to find a way. And again, going to go for a trifecta of suplexes. This time, a bit of a brain buster instead to the outside. And that is really going to hurt the animal. Well, Batista could have been cut there. Anything could have happened. Could have perhaps suffered a concussion after being drilled headfirst into the mat. Jericho again picks up Batista. And again, another one. And this time, it has cut him open. Batista bleeding from the forehead after being taken headfirst to the outside. Jericho, how about one more? This is relentless from Chris Jericho. Willing to really sacrifice his former tag team partner, former ally, for the sake of his own good. This is a, about surviving. This is about staying here on Raw. And that gash there, Batista on the forehead is really nasty right now. It is gushing out blood. Jericho trying to get that baseball shot in. Perhaps whoever does get the first shot in, that could dictate the way of this match. How will it swing? Both men fighting over it. Batista desperately, he knows he needs to get this done. Jericho again able to get the bat off Batista. No one has been able to really utilize it as of yet. Both wrestling over it. And Batista, he struck. But Jericho not letting it happen. And now, uh-oh. Jericho finally gets the baseball shot in. Right between the eyes of Batista. And the blood splattering all over the chest of the animal. And as you can see... Right there on the chest of Batista. Jericho in complete control. And this is going to get nasty pretty quickly. Jericho has Batista. Going to drag him perhaps towards the ring. Try to perhaps put him away. Sets him up near the ring apron. Batista able to counter back and get Jericho in the ring first. The blood streaming down the head of Batista could be getting into the eyes as well, really affecting his vision. 
and his game plan here kind of thrown out the window. It might be a bit of a damage control now for Batista. Try just to avoid any more shots to the head. He's in real bad trouble here. This is danger now for the animal. Jericho now. He's going to head to the top. And what has he got planned here? Is he going to fly? How will he do it? No. He's decided against the Batista. Probably not in the right position that Jericho was looking for. Decided against it now. Instead, puts the pressure on Batista. Trying to put him away here with a cover. And that left shoulder gets up. Well, not happening yet for Jericho. But in a very good position here. Batista seeing his own blood. Some superstars, they get fired up from it. Others, they panic. How will Batista react? He is an animal. Perhaps he will fire up. Back body drop now. These two fighting to the blood. Fighting to the death. For a chance to stay here on Raw. Jericho perhaps could be heading to SmackDown from the draft. Batista, he needs to keep his job. If he does not win here tonight, as far as we know, his time in the WWE will be over. SmackDown doesn't want him. Raw, they can't have him. Batista could be going. And a snap DDT quick time. And that may save the day for Batista. Now setting him up for the Beast Bite. The Beast Bite is locked in. Batista trying to make Jericho tap out. Will Jericho tap? No, Batista can't quite get it done. Instead, thinks he may have us a pinfall victory. Instead, Jericho still getting that shoulder up, though. Batista can't believe it. Thought for a moment he was going to seal the deal right there. I'll try and pick Jericho up. Very slowly, though. No sense of urgency here from Batista. Batista has to try and just regroup here, get himself going again. He's been on the brunt of a Jericho onslaught. In the last few minutes, just now, is he starting to get himself back into it? Batista, shoulders on the mat, gets the, one of them up, and that will keep him alive. Both men, former World Heavyweight Champions on SmackDown, have never won the big one on Raw here in Universe Mode. Batista, his reign, only one month. Jericho, a little longer. Jericho, a Money in the Bank winner, cashing in successfully. Had some huge moments in his career on SmackDown. Is he about to head back to the blue brand? Jericho struck with a ladder between the eyes. Batista, can he get one more in? Yes, he can. Falls it up with one on the, the, the boot of Jericho as well. Is that the turning point in this one? Is this the moment where Batista can finally get himself going again? No. Jericho drives Batista into the apron. And down Batista goes again. The pressure is back on the animal. Jericho now. Batista on the ringside barricade. Striking back with an elbow though. You see the blood all over Batista. It's not a pretty sight for the, for the animal as he rolls through. Jericho slowing down a little bit as is Batista. It might be a battle of who could just survive the longest. Who has enough left in the tank. Maybe one big move will dictate it. Jericho now bouncing off the still steps. These two veterans, they've done it all here in Universe Mode. Historic careers. Is the career of one of them about to end right now? The alliance between Jericho and Batista. It began at the beginning of the year when Batista helped Jericho knock off current Raw GM Christian. They've been friends, now tag partners, now... Well, I don't know if they're enemies, but they're certainly fighting each other like they are right now. Jericho again. Can't remain on his feet. The better part of a year. These two have been by each other's side. They've had each other's backs. Now they're trying to tear each other apart in the name of a contract. Batista now has Jericho. Look out. Here's the power and slams down Jericho. A huge gorilla press slam. That could keep Jericho down. Batista has to get him back in the ring to get the count. How much more has Jericho got left? Has he got any fight left? Can he find the code breaker? Can Batista seal the deal here? Batista looking likely. He's fought his way back. Big kick now to the chest of Jericho. What will Batista do next? Can he keep his career alive? Trying to beat Jericho now. And the left shoulder is up. A near fall on the count of two. 
Jericho slowly back to his feet. Batista just keeping the pressure on. Batista didn't have much in the tank early on. He's trying to dig deep now. Trying to go into a new gear. Find something he couldn't find early on. Snapman now by Batista. Tried to hit the headbutt. Jericho countering at the elbow. A shot to the midsection now. Batista from behind has Jericho. And there's a suplex. Jericho landing harshly on his back. He's screaming out in pain. He's feeling it. But Batista can't capitalize. And that is the wear and tear of this match on show and on display right there. Jericho might get back to his feet first. He does. Batista now. Jericho. Look out. Oh, yes. The code breaker. Out of nowhere. Batista. Nothing left in the tank to keep fighting. And Jericho gets lucky. But sometimes luck is all you need to keep yourself going and pick up the victory. Jericho was down and out. Batista just couldn't find the next gear to seal the deal. Jericho had a moment, a small window of opportunity. He took advantage, hit the code breaker. One, two, three, good night. And that's the end of Batista's career on Monday Night Raw. Potentially in the WWE. Well, we learned that Edge isn't all that interested in bringing back Batista to SmackDown. Will he do it? He's now a free agent, Batista. Will Jericho remain on Raw? We'll find out when the Survivor Series draft takes place in the coming week. But Chris Jericho has beaten Batista. And as of right now, he is still a Raw superstar. A huge win for Jericho. His career remains intact. Our next matchup, ladies and gentlemen, it is a SmackDown match. And it is for the Intercontinental Championship. It is the man that gravity forgot Neville up against the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. Well, we are so used to seeing Neville with the Intercontinental Championship around his waist. Well, let's go take a look at SmackDown a couple of weeks ago. It was Neville defending against Sheamus. And Sheamus hit the bro kick whilst Neville was flying off the top. Sheamus would go on to beat Neville and win the Intercontinental Championship. Tonight, Neville gets his rematch against Sheamus. And we'll see how good Sheamus truly is. Can Sheamus go back to back or was SmackDown simply a fluke? Well, Neville looks ready to go. We know that. But Sheamus has been absolutely terrorizing the entire SmackDown locker room for the past month, dominating everybody that steps in his way. Getting a victory over Neville on a recent episode of SmackDown as well and tag team action. The momentum is truly with Sheamus right now. I mean, honestly, who can stop him? Can Neville pick up the pieces? He's been struggling. Can he finally get the win he's been looking for? Sheamus has been beating him up after matches. We've been told there's backstage altercations between the two as well. Sheamus has just been bullying Neville. And there's been really nothing Neville can do about it to stop it from happening. Sheamus has just been dominating and, well, has truly deserved to be Intercontinental Champion right now. You cannot deny that. He has been very, very good. I think he's just found this newfound confidence in himself. This belief that he is truly better than everyone in, in his way and now he's starting to believe in himself and he's really on a warpath right now of destruction he continues this form he'll be very very hard to beat and there will be no way Neville can get that win tonight that's the prize up for grabs here tonight Neville Sheamus here we go underway right now they lock up Sheamus obviously much bigger on the two but Neville gets the side headlock it's the early momentum here and Neville will have to try and, you know, rely on his speed, quicken the pace of this one, and really put the pressure on Sheamus, test that stamina of Sheamus. Neville, one of the things that he's done so well over the past number of months is the ability to be so resilient. You know, despite the likes of Kalisto offering the best moves he could possibly think of, brand new moves coming out of nowhere, he's just been on absolute fire. You know, having the pace go a million miles a minute, Neville continued to find a way to dig deep and remain in the contest. And it was because of that he managed to find a way to beat him. He never gave up and he just 
continue to keep the, the, the tech going. And that's something that Seamus will have to be wary of here tonight. Seamus will have to beat Neville very quickly. The longer this one goes for, the more it's going to suit Neville. You know, there's been so many instances where Neville has been in real trouble. I mean, times where we thought, okay, this is going to be the moment where Neville finally loses their championship. And he digs deep. He finds a way to win. Is tonight going to be one of those cases? I think Neville's going to get beaten up. He knows that. He knows this is going to be rough for him. But if he can just somehow stay in it, somehow survive, well, that will be his ticket to victory here tonight. To becoming a two-time Intercontinental Champion here on SmackDown. Now, look out. Sweeping Neville off his feet does Sheamus. Sheamus, former world champion, former tag team champion, and now Intercontinental Champion here in Universe Mode. He's done so much here. Been a long time since he's been world champion, though. Over three years since he's had the big gold belt around his waist. He's missed it, no doubt. But as we've seen in the past, the Intercontinental Championship is certainly the title that you want to have if you want to get your career back on top. You look at the likes of CM Punk, Dean Ambrose, Neville, we thought, perhaps had the chance to replicate it as well. But, uh, the longer you have that championship around your waist, the more it is going to help you really secure your spot as a great here in universe mode and you know it's been used so many times to revive a career CM Punk especially who was down and out really never looked like becoming a world champion again he won the Intercontinental Championship had a successful title reign went on to become world champion after it so that confidence that he had of beating a number of great superstars and becoming an Intercontinental Champion and holding on to that title for as long as he possibly could and that newfound confidence helped him build him back into a top level superstar and of course he went on to win that world championship and went on to have a huge match at Wrestlemania so Sheamus could certainly go down that similar path but for Sheamus I think it's the cockiness he needs to make sure that he doesn't get too arrogant and doesn't get you know doesn't buy into himself too much as a cover here by Neville Kickyard he needs to make sure that he's still humble because otherwise Neville could surprise you and if Sheamus walks into this match thinking that Neville's going to be a pushover and he's going to get this win easily that's when Neville will strike. And that's when Sheamus will be in trouble. Speaking of striking, Neville now heading to the top of the rope. Look out, Sheamus. Here comes Neville. Moonsault off the top, connecting perfectly right on the chest and the gut. And this time as well, Neville. We're corkscrewing down on the Sheamus there with a the moonsault there. And could be it. Wow. Neville. A great sequence of moves there. Nice combination turning into a near fall. Sheamus able to stay in it. Early days still in this one. But the pressure has been applied. Neville certainly kind of testing the waters in this one. Seeing what Sheamus is all about. And how Sheamus is going to approach this one. Sheamus trying to work his way back into it. Kicks out again at two. Neville has beaten the likes of Kalisto, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton to become and remain in a Cornell champion. Sheamus... I guess just too big, too strong, and too tough for Neville a few weeks ago on SmackDown. Has Neville learned from his mistake? He tried to fly off the top of the rope. Sheamus was ready for it. Pounced back to his feet, connected with a bro kick. Will Neville try to do the same move tonight? Or will he change his game? Will he look for a different move to try and beat Sheamus? Sheamus, back body drop, down goes Neville. And that's where you have to trust yourself back yourself and trust that it won't happen a second time he has to pinpoint the right opportunity and strike at the right moment Sheamus now countering the attempted standing drop kick swatting it away and a kick out of two late count there by Neville using all of the two count that he could possibly use to try and regroup here Sheamus now look out fall away slam into that top right hand corner of the ring so far Sheamus the last few moments of this one, certainly having his way. Everything is falling into the, his hands here. It's all working out in his favor. White noise now. White noise and Neville in true trouble. Sheamus, if he hits the bro kick, it will be all over. Not many men kick out of it. Neville, I'm not sure if he can. It's beaten him once. He can certainly beat him again here tonight. Sheamus now, gut wrench, into the suplex. Sheamus heading to the outside of the ring. Disqualifications and countouts still apply. The announce table, of course, is okay. 
And Sheamus is going to go for it. Going to try and take this table out of the equation. And hopefully put Neville through it. Now, Sheamus bouncing Neville off the steel steps. Follows it up with a clothesline as well. Neville taken down off his feet. Count of three now by the referee. Sheamus has to be conscious of that count. Of course, he will keep that title if it is a count out here tonight. Won't worry him too much. Neville now brings Sheamus back in the ring. He knows he must break that count because he can't win the title via count out. Sheamus, he's adamant though of putting Neville through that table. Again, heading to the outside and looking over at that table. That's what he wants to do. He feels as though if he can get Neville through this table, that's going to be it for Neville. Perhaps a white noise for the announce table. That would be brutal. Neville though, hanging on, trying to survive here. Neville now brings Sheamus back in the ring. Not too phased, Neville. Wants to keep this one inside the ring and stay well away from that table. Look out. From behind, a re reverse Hurricane Rana. Sheamus taken out of his neck there. Big pressure now on Sheamus. Can he kick out? As Neville's going to try and put Sheamus away. Here we go. Hooks that leg. Neville to win back the title. No. Sheamus still your Intercontinental Champion. Still fighting. Still digging deep himself. Still trying to remain in it. Shot to the midsection now. Right hand here by Sheamus. Sheamus got, has got Neville. Oh, he's got him up high. Going to go for that high cross. The bit of the razor's edge. The Celtic cross there. And it's connected. Neville launched into the top left hand corner of the ring. Is that going to be enough to win this match? No, the shoulder gets up. And as you can see, Sheamus in a bit of disbelief. Thought he may have had him there. Thought that was going to be the move to beat Neville right there. But Sheamus quickly finding out what Neville is all about and how Neville is so resilient. You can hit your best move over and over again. But Neville will find a way to kick out of it. I still feel as though the bro kick is the go-to move. That could be the one move to win Sheamus this match. Sheamus has to find it quickly. Neville has... A chance to go a lot longer in this one compared to Sheamus. Oh, what about that from Neville? Shoulders down. Has he got him? No. Sheamus just kicks out at two. But Neville flew off the top, turned into a Hurricane Rana. We thought Sheamus was going to catch him, turned into a powerbomb. Neville reversing the situation, nearly getting the three count. Beautifully executed there by Neville. Turning potentially a bad situation into a good one. Now bouncing off the top rope there. Neville shot to the midsection there. Those quick kicks, they are deadly. Neville now going to try and pick up Sheamus. Neville, he's stronger than he looks, no doubt about that. Great upper body strength by Neville. Sheamus in some trouble. Neville's just starting to get himself going here in this match. Sheamus senses it. And he realizes he has to make a move right now. Rolls through there. Neville flat on his back. Sheamus, what can he do now? Does he need to find the bro kick? Or is the white noise the next step? A suplex there. The back bounces off the mat. Pressure now on Neville again. Can Sheamus get this win? Oh no! Well, a count of three. The referee counts the three, but he's saying that Neville got the shoulder up before the count. Sheamus not happy with him at all, arguing with the referee. He feels as though that was the three count. Now, into the German suplex. Sheamus takes down Neville off of his feet. And Sheamus wants Neville to get back to his feet. I think he's going to look for it. Here comes the bro kick. And Neville's head has been taken off his body. Good night. Oh, what the hell. Neville has got the shoulder up. Not many men kick out of the bro kick. Neville's done it right there. The move that beat him for the IC title.
a couple of weeks ago. It didn't get him the win tonight. Neville shows us his resiliency and he remains alive in this crucial matchup. Somehow, Neville's still in this, bouncing off the shoulder of the Sheamus. Neville, this may he be his last chance. Another Brogue, it's over. Neville has to make his move now. He has to make his play. Can he get himself back in this match? Can he find the red arrow? Can he find something to take the big man off of his feet for a long enough time to head to the top? Trying to position Sheamus perhaps for the red arrow there. Sheamus not going to really have any of it. Back to his feet now. Chops the elbow himself. Sheamus just taking a quick breather. Sheamus still in a bit of disbelief. He can't believe that didn't get him the win earlier. The rivalry between these two is certainly heating up. Sheamus won the first battle. Neville trying to hang on to stop him from winning the second. Close line in the corner now. Sheamus really closing in on a victory here. How much more can Neville take? Can Neville remain in this match? These left hands now, bouncing Neville off the mat as well. Sheamus just trying to grind down and wear down Neville, trying to beat him up, beat him down. Now sweeping Neville off his feet, tried to kind of get himself back into it, did Neville. Paid the price off his feet now, Sheamus in complete control of this one. And I think it's just one move away from defending the championship right here. I'm not sure if Neville has anything left to, to mount a comeback. We know he's the king of comebacks, but can he do it again here tonight? Sheamus now about to find the killer blow. He's going for it again. This time, it's the Celtic Cross connects for a second time. Sheamus wasting some valuable seconds. Neville's near the ropes. Doesn't need him. He kicks out again. And Sheamus, he cannot believe it. Well, Neville, when it comes to big matches, when it comes to pay-per-view big fights, he digs deep. He finds a way to keep on surviving. And he's managed to survive in this one. A bro kick, no good. Two Celtic crosses, no good. And now, Sheamus. Again, Neville from behind. Sheamus has gone from potentially dominating and picking up a victory to now. It's slipping away from him. Sheamus kicks out on an air for the count of two. Neville though, that's a big move right there. Sheamus, he has to try and recover. Neville grabs a hold of Sheamus, trying to go for a belly to belly or something sorts of like that. Sheamus obviously the bigger man, not gonna let that happen. Oh, Sheamus trying to pick him up for white noise. Instead got sent down by Neville. Neville now trying to figure out which corner to go to. This is his moment. This is it for Neville. This is his one chance. Red Arrow. Got it. The legs are hooked. Neville to win back the title. He's done it. Neville wins. And is now a two-time Intercontinental Champion. He picked his moment. He timed it perfectly, he hit the move perfectly, and now Neville has knocked off Sheamus. What a match between these two, Neville, he's, he's done it again, the comeback kid somehow survives an onslaught from Sheamus to find the red arrow to seal the deal, win this match here tonight, and retain the championship. We thought for sure Sheamus was going to win this one. There was just no way that Neville could come back from this beatdown from Sheamus. But he's done it. He's found a way. Neville is now a two-time champion. A short-term reign from Sheamus has come to an end. The Red Arrow, good night. And this is what he did perfectly. Putting the pressure on the shoulders of Sheamus with a good cover. Grabbing the leg, really forcing it back. Putting so much pressure on the neck and the shoulders. Sheamus couldn't kick out. Neville 
Your Intercontinental Champion, he's got it back. We said earlier it was strange seeing him without the title. Well, he's got it back tonight. We're going to be seeing with this championship maybe for a lot longer yet. A big win here tonight for Neville. And a great start for SmackDown here tonight for Survivor Series. Our next matchup, ladies and gentlemen, it is our women's tag team match. First up, Sasha Banks coming to the ring, the former women's champion. Sasha teams up with Paige tonight, her well, newfound ally. We're still a little, a little unsure what's going on here between the two, if they're a fully fledged team. It seems as though they're on the same page. They've been, well, no pun intended, but they've been together for a while now, and they seem as though they are a unit and they are ready to battle tonight. Paige teams out with Sasha Banks to take on Charlotte and a partner we don't know. We don't even know if Charlotte has found a partner. We know she's been testing, trialing, trying to figure out the right person for her. Has she found that person? We'll find out in a moment's time. Here comes our champion. It is Paige. Paige is successful. Hell in a Cell Women's Championship defense against Charlotte. And obviously has had to deal with Charlotte the last couple of months now, getting Sasha Banks on her side. You'd have to assume Paige certainly has the upper hand here. She has been in complete control of this women's division here on Raw and SmackDown. And now with the title in her hands, she has a huge target on her back. Charlotte has been trying to exploit that target, but has had not exactly the best of luck. Tonight, she tries to get that victory she's been looking for. She'll team up with some, someone we don't know who that will be. Has she found a partner? Who will be her partner? She's been scouring through the Raw and SmackDown locker rooms. She's teamed up with the likes of Natalia, Summer Rae, and we've seen the likes of Emma look pretty good as well. Will she go for one of those women? Or will she look somewhere else? We've been told she's been searching and searching everywhere for the right person. Who will be her partner to take on Sasha Banks and Paige here tonight at Survivor Series? Wow, she's found a big partner indeed. It is. The former NXT superstar Becky Lynch finally coming up to the main roster, making her main roster debut here tonight at Survivor Series. Charlotte has recruited Becky Lynch, and she looks fired up, ready to go here tonight. A big opportunity for her. Becky Lynch, she's finally here. Offering her services tonight, lending a hand to Charlotte tonight to try and take out Paige and Sasha Banks. It's been a rough time for Charlotte trying to deal and overcome this two-on-one situation. You go back to the handicap match that happened on Raw. Charlotte was just dismantled. She needs a partner. And tonight, she's recruited a great one in Becky Lynch. Tonight, we kick it off with Sasha Banks and Charlotte. So a great partner here by Charlotte, Becky Lynch, didn't exactly win the Women's Championship down in NXT. Charlotte, though, well, NXT Women's Champion. Becky Lynch was gunning for that title while Charlotte had it. They've had a bit of a battle between the two of them. There's no doubt about that, but the mutual respect has uh, overcome the, any animosity between the two. Teaming up here tonight, a chance for Becky Lynch to get her feet here on the main roster. Charlotte now gets in the ring with Paige. The Women's Champion meets her top contender, Charlotte. Couldn't get it done at Hell in a Cell. And a win here tonight will get her right back in the driver's seat for a chance at the championship down the line. Paige taken off her feet there by Charlotte. And now Becky Lynch going to get in this match. Here she comes, the last kicker. She enters this matchup. We've seen plenty of her in NXT, finally getting her shot here at Survivor Series. And she's in there with the very best in the locker room. Paige as a spite buster. Welcome to the main roster, Becky. Paige a huge spine buster. Becky Lynch could be out of it. Paige crawling on top of Becky Lynch. What has she got planned here? Look out. 
Uh oh. Here comes those vicious headbutts. Using her own skull as a weapon against Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch from behind though. Not going to give up that easy. She's been a fighter, Becky Lynch, no doubt about that. Her time at NXT, she didn't reach the pinnacle, but she was very good. We knew that. We knew she was going to be a strong competitor, one of the top tier competitors. And it was only a matter of time until she joined the main roster ranks tonight. She gets a perfect opportunity now. Sasha Banks entered this match, perhaps the woman of the year for Universe Mode thus far. She's had a tremendous year. Fallen off the rails a little bit last few months, but... Certainly this allegiance and alliance with Paige has worked out pretty well for a double DDT there on the Becky. A short-lived tenure in this one as Paige gets back into it. Quick tanks there by Sasha Banks and Paige testing their alliance here tonight. Will they be able to coincide together as a tag team and get this win? How will Becky Lynch and Charlotte cope? Obviously both women have their own agenda. Both want to be women's champion. We know that. And they put that aside tonight to try and beat Sasha and Paige. So far, so good. Becky takes Paige off of her feet. Thought about attack, decided against it. Going to keep the pressure on Paige here. And look out. Trying to grab the leg. For the fisherman suplex, not going to happen. Instead, Paige nearly gets the quick pinfall on Becky Lynch. The referee a little slow to get down there for the count. No surprise there. As now a tornado DDT off the second. Those few extra seconds that the referee waited to get down there could have been the difference between a win and a two count. Right there. Sasha Banks back in the match now. Becky Lynch. Hit with a German. The suplex there. Taking Becky off of her feet. Now going to look for the cover here. Sasha Banks just gets a one count. Sasha Banks, women's champion for a few months. She came in. What an impact she had. Defeating Emma. Taking the title away. It wasn't until Paige really found this newfound aggression to her. This new style and really started to kick into a new level. That Sasha Banks was unable to, to go into that next gear herself and take out Paige. And she lost the championship. Then a strange alliance appeared. Sasha Banks deciding not to help Charlotte break the pinfall instead. Deciding to let the match happen. Let Paige keep the championship. In that triple threat, never since these two have just been together. They've kind of got them wrong and kind of had each other's back. So I guess a mutual respect for one another. Sasha Banks probably realizes she's no longer in the title hunt. Sasha Banks has beaten her fair and square. So Sasha Banks, I guess if you can't beat him, how about join him? It might be a situation of keep your enemies close as well. Beautiful power slam there by Charlotte. Sasha Banks keeping her enemy page, the woman who holds the title, very close, perhaps trying to find out some intel. That's the feeling I get. I still feel as though these two could turn on each other at a drop of a dime. I feel like Sasha Banks still wants to be women's champion, but she's keeping an eye on Paige, learning everything about her. There's no better way to do that than stand on the apron as her tag partner or watch her matches from ringside to get to know her weaknesses, trying to build the knowledge to beat Paige. But so far, that alliance has shown no signs of cracking as of yet. Charlotte headbutt of her own there to Paige. Paige now spun down with a swinging neck break, neck breaker. Now the cover. Hooks that leg. Paige kicks out though. Charlotte has just been pursuing that women's championship ever since coming to the main roster. Paige issuing an open challenge. She was happy to defend her championship. In came Charlotte. And put the pressure on Paige. Paige able to knock Charlotte off in a really close contest. And she did it again. And hell in a cell. Charlotte basically saying that she she's not quite there yet. She knows she can get there. But she's got to earn that win. Right now, a win over Paige in this tag match will give her so much confidence. Now, headed to the top of the rope. Oh, yes, the moonsault off the top rope. Charlotte really risking it all right there. Make or break. No, can't get the win. Charlotte thought that was going to be the move to win her this match. The title not on the line, of course, a tag match, but a win over Paige 
Nearly just as sweet. Becky Lynch now re-enters this one. Charlotte really the turning the tide there in this one. Becky Lynch, can she continue the momentum that Charlotte has built here for her team? Suplexing Paige down. Grabs the arm. Trying to wear it down. Sasha Banks, she's got to get a tag here. Paige in a little bit of trouble. Becky Lynch has looked the goods throughout this match thus far. And if she can capitalize on the momentum that Charlotte has set for her, Paige is in some trouble. Now springing off the second rope, hits the drop kick, and now sending Paige to the outside. Gets a tag as well. Paige is in trouble. She's down on her knees. She's trying to get back into the ring. Becky Lynch. She's done her job well. Paige now. Off the apron. Paige again off the apron there by Charlotte. Charlotte in control. Doing well. Looking for revenge. Now I think she may have met some... Might have met some of the steel ring posts as well as the apron. And again into the apron. Charlotte really trying to brutalize Paige here. Really trying to wear it down. Paige in trouble. She's dazed right now. Can she break the count? A count of seven is a win, but I don't think that's the way Charlotte wants to win. Paige now face first. Straight into the mat now, Charlotte. Oh boy, look out now. Charlotte setting her up for it. Natural selection. And Charlotte, I think it's about to win this match for her team. The cover now, Sasha Banks gets there in time. Becky Lynch just a little lazy there. Couldn't quite stop Sasha Banks. And that moment of hesitation has cost them the win perhaps Sasha Banks no question about her allegiance to pain she put her body on the line to make sure that she won this match for her team now Charlotte sets up Paige here comes a spear the spear by Charlotte a boat rattling spear taking down Paige Sasha Banks trying to distract the referee and now gets in there to break it up Becky Lynch takes out Sasha Banks again this time. Paige, she's still in trouble. She's taken an absolute beating from Charlotte here. Again, another natural selection. And surely now, that's got to be it. Where's Sasha? She's not in the frame. It's over. Well, Charlotte finally gets a win over Paige here at Survivor Series. She had to earn it, no doubt about that. Sasha Banks just would not go away. But at the end, Becky Lynch, she fought off Sasha, took her out of the picture. And Charlotte gets a well-earned victory over Paige tonight. A great back and forth match between our two women teams here. Becky Lynch was certainly a great addition for Charlotte tonight. Having Charlotte's back, Charlotte at the end though really dominated Paige. Just driving her into the apron countless times. Natural selections. Moon salt as we're about to see here. The spear as well. It was brutal at the end by Charlotte. Really earning this victory for her team. An impressive one, no doubt. Sending a statement to the women's champion. And her partner, Sasha Banks. You get the feeling though? Charlotte wants the title. Becky Lynch wants the title. I still think Sasha Banks wants the title. Paige is the champion. Perhaps we will see all four of these women lock up very soon for that championship down the line. I think it's inevitable. Sasha Banks, Paige couldn't get the win tonight. Charlotte and Becky Lynch, they score a well-deserved victory here at Survivor Series. Well, this is a bit of a surprise. Uh, the Spear Shock don't have a match scheduled tonight. They are the WWE Tag Team Champions, but I guess they're coming out here tonight. We've been told they're here to vent their frustrations about being left off the show. I guess that certainly makes some sense. They are the Tag Champs, a dominant team at that. And they haven't had any challenges to step up to take them on here tonight. So unfortunately, 
They have been left off the show. But Ryback and Roman Reigns, they have something to say about that. We're going to hear from them in a moment's time. And they're going to vent their frustrations. So this is how it's going to be, huh? The big guy and I, we can't get a match at one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year because there's no other tag teams to step up to take us on. That is not our fault. We're missing out on our paycheck tonight, and we demand that we get a fight here tonight. I know, Christian, you're new to the job, but you gotta understand, you better treat your highest prize tag team right, because we are happy to jump ship at any minute. So we are not leaving this ring, we are hijacking this show until we get ourselves a fight. I don't care who the hell it is, as long as we have someone to fight tonight. Well, you asked for a fight, you're gonna get one from the American Alpha. They are here! It's straight away right back coming out the chat gable outside the ring. Reigns is still in the ring. Right back getting the jump on Chad Gable. He saw him coming down to the, the ring and he's come after him. Meanwhile in the ring, Jason Jordan trying to come from behind. Trying to get the quick one on Roman Reigns. Reigns though getting the better of Jordan. It's Spear Shock in control so far. Gable now trying to bounce back here. He's coming up a much, coming up against a much bigger man and right back. Here's some suplexes though. A couple of German suplexes. How about a third from Chad Gable on right back? A big message said. Jordan now. He's back in control. Launches off the second with an uppercut. Jason Jordan, Chad Gable making their debut. They've officially signed with Raw. And Jordan with the Olympic Slam takes out Roman Reigns. And the spear shock they want an opponent. Well, you found one in the American Alpha. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the five superstars officially safe from the upcoming Survivor Series draft that takes place this coming week. We have Rusev, The Ballad Clubs, Gallows and Anderson, Dolph Ziggler, Seth Rollins, and AJ Styles. These superstars cannot be chosen in the upcoming draft by SmackDown. They are officially exempt from the draft and will be staying on Monday Night Raw. Again, that's Rusev, Gallows and Anderson from the Ballad Club, Dolph Ziggler, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles. Of course, champions cannot be chosen as well. Ladies and gentlemen, time for our United States Championship matchup. It is Cesaro challenging for the championship against Shinsuke Nakamura. We just learned of the superstars that are exempt from the draft. And Cesaro was not on that list. So he is officially up for grabs for SmackDown. Of course, if he wins the championship tonight, he will be staying on Raw and he will be a fully fledged Raw superstar going forward. And that would mean that Nakamura would be up for taking for SmackDown. And that would be a huge get as well. Cesaro is a huge get as well. SmackDown can get him. Cesaro challenging for the US Championship here tonight. A former US Champion. It's been a long time, a very long time since he was United States Champion here in Universe Mode. His opponent, a man who has really made a lot of waves since coming to Raw. He has really surprised us all, but how quickly he has gravitated and gotten himself to the top. Shinsuke Nakamura, your United States Champion. A man who has come from Japan. He's done it all in Japan. He's been a mega star over there. Now coming to the United States to try and replicate that here in the WWE. He is a US Champion now. Many believe he will be champion for quite some time. He has all the talent in the world. We know that he is as good as it gets here on Raw. And Cesaro will be a very tough opponent for him, no doubt about it. Because Cesaro, to get here, he had to win two big, big matchups. And he had to earn it. There is no doubt about it. He does deserve to have this match here tonight. Cesaro locks up with Nakamura. Here we go. So Cesaro had to beat Sami Zayn one-on-one, -on -one, which he did so. Then 
he had to meet a former WWE Champion in Dean Ambrose and managed to successfully do that as well. Got himself into this position and now Cesaro has a chance to become US Champion here against Nakamura. If he can knock him off here tonight, it'll be a tough, tough task, no doubt about it. But Cesaro is in some good form. Cesaro getting a big victory on Raw in the last week as well. Nakamura the same. So both men coming into this one with a win behind them. Nakamura's had an impressive couple of months since coming to the Raw roster. Winning the US title very quickly. Taking it from Rusev. And now he's managed to hold on to it and really kind of start himself a great little career here on Raw. He's really done all of us pretty proud. Been very impressed with the way he's been going about it. And uh, his success, I think, might be coming out a little bit of a surprise, to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting him to come in and, and really perform the way he has that quickly. But he sure as hell has, and he's been very, very impressive. Cesaro hitting a German suplex there on Nakamura. Just now wiping his face on the mat there. Falls up with an elbow strike as well. Nakamura up to his feet now. Cesaro. Snap mare takedown and chin lock as well. Cesaro has all the moves in the world. We know that he's the Swiss Superman. His power and strength for his size just cannot be matched. He has freakish strength and what he can do in the ring just can't be replicated by many men. Nakamura, he will hit you hard. And those strikes are deadly. And when he hits you with that Kinshasa, it is all but over. Cesaro will know that. He needs to be a lookout for it here tonight. Cesaro with another German, German suplex of his own. We just saw some suplexes hit in that little battle between the American Alpha and Roman Reigns and Ryback. Cesaro replicating their good work in that one with their suplexes and Cesaro hitting a few to start this one off here. Still many big matches to come. We still have the battle for the draft pick. Rusev versus Samoa Joe. Both men are safe in the draft. Who will earn their brand an extra pick? Plus, Kevin Owens defends his championship against The Undertaker, Daniel Bryan, in a triple threat match. And also, the one you've all been waiting for. There's some big, big news regarding this match. We'll talk about it when it happens. But it is the three-on-three. -three. The Balor Club versus Ziggler, Styles, and Rollins. Cesaro connects with the power bomb. Nakamura is down. Cesaro thinks he may have him here. Hooks the leg. Pressure now on Nakamura. And the champion will kick out. Cesaro, this is what he needs to do, I think. Come out, hold off the blocks, and really test Nakamura. I don't think Nakamura has been tested as of yet. Nakamura, whilst he's been very, very good, hasn't really been in a predicament where he's getting close to defeat. Cesaro, if he can really... Test out Nakamura here. Put him under the pump. Put the pressure on him. And the Japanese star, he may be unable to really overcome it. He may buckle under that pressure. And that's what Cesaro needs to do. Really come out all guns blazing here, in my opinion. And really put Nakamura on his back feet. And try and see if he can overcome it. Well, so far, Cesaro out-muscling Nakamura. Another German suplex. Nakamura getting a little frustrated with himself as well. Nakamura taking Cesaro off his feet. Look out the knees into the arm. Nakamura looking the good so far. No doubt it. He's looking pretty good. He's going to be a tough, tough competitor going forward. Cesaro knows that. And the longer that Nakamura holds into this championship, the harder he's going to be and the, the bigger threat he's going to be potentially one day for that world title. He is really gaining a lot of steam. Many believe he is a future world champion here on Raw. He's got it all, all the tools to succeed. Really showing us right now. Cesaro just had control. It's slipping away now. Nakamura gaining some steam. Shots to the midsection again. Cesaro and Nakamura, each of their own. Nakamura now grabs the leg of Cesaro, plants it down. Nakamura driving him into the mat. Potentially could have it here. Hooks the leg again. But still can't end this one. Cesaro remains in it. Nakamura. Is that frustration? Or is it a little sign of fatigue? We'll see. Snap suplex now. Cesaro still down. Nakamura has 
Worked his way back into it. The opening stage is all Cesaro. Nakamura starting to get into the motions here. Starting to really rev up. Drop the knee on Cesaro. Now going to try and pick up Cesaro. Cesaro shrugs him away. Cesaro tried to grab a hold of Nakamura. Couldn't do it, Nakamura. With a running kick there. And Cesaro has been taken off his feet again. Cesaro quickly learning what Nakamura is all about. That one. Hit the side suplex. Kind of throwing and tossing Cesaro to the other side of the ring. Nakamura again has Cesaro up and Cesaro bouncing off the mat. He's in trouble here, Cesaro. Nakamura really getting going. Going here, really starting to gain real control. Oh, I think Cesaro got a little lucky there. Nakamura lined him up. I think he was going for the kid, Shaza. Went for the running knee to the face. Couldn't quite get it. Now, Nakamura drops Cesaro right onto his belly. Nakamura missed an opportunity before. He can't make the same mistake twice. If he misses that Kinshasa again, Cesaro will definitely make him pay. But Nakamura, despite missing it, has kept the offense on. He's still on top of Cesaro. Still making sure Cesaro can't work his way back into it. Cesaro tried to do so right there. Nakamura at the counter. Now Nakamura has Cesaro up. Slams him down. Had him in the fireman's carry. Spun him around. Slammed him down. Cesaro is a little dazed. Nakamura from behind. Grabs the leg of Cesaro. Uh-oh, this is not going to be good. Right on the shoulders, but the arm underneath the rope. Beautifully executed there by Nakamura Cesaro. Luckily, that he landed near the ropes. A little bit of a mistake there by Nakamura, who's now into the corner thanks to Cesaro. This may be Cesaro's last chance. Nakamura really looking good. Cesaro just been struggling the last couple minutes. If he can hit a big move here, which is, is exactly what he's going for. It's do or die now for Cesaro. Grabs both arms, hooks it, and tosses Nakamura to the other side of the ring. Nakamura may be out of it. The cover now. Hooks the leg. Cesaro, will he do it? No, he can't again. A kick at it too. And Cesaro... Felt as though that was going to be his moment where he finally won the US title after three years. He lost the championship all the way back at the beginning of Universe Mode in our first year. Has not won it back since. Cesaro, being a tag team champion, single success has been few and far between. Trying to really revive his career. Wants to be a world champion. We know he has all the potential to be one. Just hasn't been able to string together the victories to do so. Nakamura now. Bouncing off the top turnbuckle. Cesaro with a chop to follow. Now, looking for the belly to belly. Nakamura countering back with some strikes of his own. Cesaro missed his opportunity. Now Nakamura. Look out. Has the arm. Cross arm breaker now. Cesaro, will he tap out? No, he won't. Nakamura released the hold. Cesaro. Oh, he caught him. The uppercut. Through. Nakamura up in the air. Hits the uppercut. And Nakamura may be out of it. Cesaro. An unlikely victory. It's not going to happen there. But he's getting close. Cesaro felt as though that could have been the moment. Now, looking for the sharpshooter. Can he get him over? He's got him over. He's on his belly. Cesaro, a submission of his own. He didn't tap to the arm breaker. Will Nakamura tap to the sharpshooter? No, but has the damage been dealt? Cesaro to win this match now. Nakamura gets the shoulder up late in the count. Well... Not much time left until that hand was about to hit three. Nakamura found a way to get the shoulder up. He dug deep, keeping this match alive. But for how much longer, though? Cesaro. No success there. Nakamura now. 
he can't find success. Back and forth between these two. Both men trying to find the upper hand, trying to gain advantage. Nakamura now again, another cross arm breaker. I think Cesaro was near the ropes. Nakamura didn't get the win. He went for broke. Now he's on the shoulders of Cesaro. And he has just been slammed. Cesaro not staying on top of him though. A chance to capitalize here. He needed to take a quick breather. I'm not sure if that was the best decision to make. He has Nakamura on the rocks. But Nakamura, the hands around the chin. That's not going to work for Cesaro. Nakamura now. Look out. Here comes a landslide. Nakamura grabs the leg. Cesaro, good night. Nakamura retains. Nakamura has retained the US title and he will still be your champion here on Raw. He's not going anywhere. Cesaro, however, is this the last time we see him represent Raw for quite some time? He's certainly a very prized superstar, someone that our GM Edge would certainly have his eyes on. He's not safe from the draft. Nakamura, he is. Cesaro loses tonight. He thought this was going to be his moment where he finally captures the US title. But Nakamura continues his impressive run since his debut. And he finds a way to win again. Cesaro, a late flurry of offense at the end. We thought maybe he might be coming with a comeback. But Nakamura with the landslide, that was it. Nakamura, still your champion, ladies and gentlemen. Remains US champion. Can he keep this momentum going? He's in red hot form. He's performing very, very well. But who will be the next superstar to step up the challenge? The king of strong style. Ladies and gentlemen, if you missed it, check out the highlights of our pre-show where we saw the return of Kurt Hawkins. What a return it was. He was on fire. He challenged anyone in the back to a match from SmackDown. He's officially back here on SmackDown. Randy Orton accepted the challenge. He put up a big fight. Got that one huge right hand in. But that was it. DDT. RKO. Randy Orton wins. And that's the end of Kurt Hawkins. Our other matchup. Do or die for Sandow. If he won, he keeps his contract here on SmackDown. If he lost, it was all over. Unfortunately, he crashed and burned. And Miz got the win. It is one of our three huge matchups tonight. It is Rusev versus Samoa Joe. Rusev from Raw, Samoa Joe from SmackDown. And I'll tell you this, Samoa Joe, this is his biggest match thus far in his career. Rusev, he's been under the pressure in the past. Samoa Joe, if he wins, he gets SmackDown. A much needed draft pick if Rusev wins. Raw will most likely go to five picks as it stands right now. Raw currently well in the lead of the ratings battle for this month. And it seems as though they will earn that extra pick from the ratings. So if Raw can win here tonight, they'll do a clean sweep. They'll get five picks. SmackDown will just get three. And Rusev's opponent. A bit of the unknown here for Rusev. Never faced Samoa Joe. Here in the main roster before they meet tonight for the first time, Samoa Joe represents SmackDown. And he comes up against Rusev. For Samoa Joe, he was adamant that this match meant more to him than just getting his brand a draft pick. This is about getting revenge. A couple of weeks ago, Monday Night Raw had a chance to sign anyone from NXT they wanted to. They decided to pick then at the time, NXT Champion AJ Styles. Samoa Joe was picked second by SmackDown. Obviously, Raw had the first initial pick. SmackDown said that they were pretty happy to have Samoa Joe. I mean, I think they were looking as though they wanted to get Joe instead of Styles regardless. So it worked out pretty well for SmackDown in the end. And now Joe joins SmackDown and wants his revenge on Raw. Joe tried to get an early shot there on Rusev. 
but uh, decided to lock up instead with that side headlock now applied, wrenching the head and skull early on here of Samoa Joe. So Joe wants revenge. He wants to beat Raw here tonight and help his brand get a much needed victory. Obviously Samoa Joe, bit of animosity between Christian and Monday Night Raw for not picking him up and deciding against him. They basically said, you know what, there's someone better than you, someone we'd rather have than you on our roster. And that's a big thing to deal with. That's a big blow to, to kind of suffer. When you just come into the main roster and not to be the first choice from a brand, that's a bit of a, a harsh blow. But it's pretty obvious why AJ Styles was NXT champion, had beaten Samoa Joe a number of times. From that theory alone, you'd have to you would definitely have to suggest that Samoa Joe was not as good or not better than uh, AJ Styles anyway. So in the end, SmackDown has Joe. They're very happy. And Rusev, he picked up a victory over Sami Zayn to get into this matchup. Obviously, Christian has high hopes for Rusev as one of his top-tier stars. And the stipulation for this match, only men who had never won a world championship could compete in this match. Mr. McMahon wanted to test our GM's ability to find and scout out the next best, next big talent. Find out who is going to be a future star in the company. Samoa Joe and Rusev were two available superstars to be in the mix for that. And they won their respective matches to earn this spot. Samoa Joe got a victory in a six-man battle royal. Nice strength there by Samoa Joe taking down Rusev. Joe got a victory in a six-man battle royal on SmackDown a few weeks ago. Eliminating the likes of Kalisto, Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt. Joe also, last week on SmackDown, got a much-needed victory as well against Bray Wyatt one-on-one. -on -one. A huge win for Joe, but he did pay the price afterwards. Bray Wyatt did attack him after the matchup, and I think Bray Wyatt couldn't have a bit more beef for Samoa Joe just quite yet. So those two, I don't think it's all that done between them as of right now. Joe representing SmackDown, they need this victory. Our current general manager for SmackDown, Edge, is under the pump. A lot of rumors going around right now that his job is in jeopardy if SmackDown don't have an impressive performance here at Survivor Series. The ratings are becoming an issue for SmackDown. They've obviously done very, very well in interpromotional battles like this one right here. The favorite would have to be Samoa Joe because of that fact alone. But the problem for SmackDown is, is that... Look, they're not winning the ratings battles for the last three months. Raw, as it seems to be right now, let's assume that Raw does win the ratings here for Survivor Series. It would just, We can assume that Raw has won three of the last three months, so that is a real issue. SmackDown have only won a handful of times throughout the entire duration of the series, so that's a real issue for SmackDown. And Edge hasn't been able to, to stop that from happening. Only a few wins next to his name. Rusev grabbing the, the bottom rope there, breaking that up. Attempted break, attempted pinfall. He broke that up via the rope. Lana ringside as well. What kind of factor will she play in this one? You have to assume she'll get herself involved. She generally does. Always helping Rusev out when he needs it. Rusev, former United States champion, one of the best United States champions we've seen in, in quite some time. It, it didn't exactly excel in defending his championship all that much. But he had a dominant presence. He really lifted his game. He went from a guy who had potential to really fulfilling it. And now has that chance to really take that leap into the next level. Rusev really is starting to establish himself as a top tier star here on Raw. But he needs this win. A win here tonight will not only get a win for Raw. As all that thought, Samoa Joe takes down Rusev. Rusev planning, getting planted down there. And a chance now for Joe to capitalize. So what Joe going to do here? Not, not going to go for the cover. I was about to say, a win here tonight for either Joe or Rusev will basically put you in the good books with your general manager. They get an extra pick because of you. So if you're Rusev, you win here tonight, potentially your name could be thrown right into the WWE Championship mix. And that's something Rusev certainly has his eye on. So Samoa Joe, he's only brand new. But a win here tonight over the likes of Rusev, that's a massive victory for for Edge, and he will be very, very happy with Samoa Joe. A chance that Joe might just even get thrown straight into the big leagues against the likes of a Kevin Owens. You just don't know. That is a huge proposition for Samoa Joe. Whoever walks out world champion tonight may be seeing some more Samoa Joe, and we'll find out who will be world champion in our next matchup, of course. Joe with a headbutt, taking down Rusev, now getting Rusev back to his feet. Going to try and whip him against the ropes here. Thought he was going for the corner instead against the other side of the ropes. And a strike there takes down Rusev. And continues to try and grind away and wear down Rusev. Lana now, what's she doing? She wants Samoa Joe to come over. And having a bit of a chat. 
And now Rusev has Joe up. Look out. Spins him around and slams him down. Real trouble now for Joe. The distraction proving to be a good one from Lana, but not enough to keep Joe down and out of this contest. Samoa Joe getting himself a quick breather here, trying to reassess the situation, analyze what he needs to do now to get this victory. Rusev, if he can win this match for Raw, he will finally have gotten a victory for Raw in cross-branded matches. It's always been SmackDown when it's bragging rights, draft picks for WrestleMania, you name it. SmackDown always finds a way to win these matchups. And Raw, our new GM, Christian, one of the things he's promised, one of the things he wants to do so badly is to finally take that away from SmackDown. That's been the one saving grace you would assume for SmackDown GM Edge, is when it comes to brand versus brand, SmackDown finds a way to win those matches. But the ratings, they're an issue. But as long as he can keep winning these brand versus brand contests and keep his roster strong, he believes he's not going anywhere as general manager. If Christian can beat him tonight, have Rusev win this match tonight, and earn five picks to three, take away five of his best superstars from his show, it's quite, honestly, SmackDown could be done. SmackDown could be lights out, game over, that's it. Because Raw, they might just continue to run away and you can never catch them from there. That's the issue that uh, SmackDown currently faces. And that's why they need someone like Samoa Joe, who's a fresh face, to come in here and get this victory for them. Joe, the strike there on the Rusev. The steel chair was in, in the ring, thanks to Lana. Lana still trying to distract Joe, but instead, Rusev's handling Joe himself. Coming out. And can't quite get it as Joe gets that left shoulder up. Rusev trying to get back to his feet in first and continue the offense here. Joe's in the corner. These two men match up very, very well. Two big, big men. So Moa Joe, from the looks of it, probably a little bit more size compared to Rusev. Rusev probably a little bit more muscular. It's stronger than Samoa Joe, you would assume. He's a very strong man, Rusev, and that power may just be enough to help him win this match here tonight. Joe, though, with a clothesline, clubbing Rusev on the chin. Down he goes. Now Joe. He attempted to counter there. Can't quite get it. Snapman now from Rusev, and now the headlock as well. Pressure now on Samoa Joe. Joe's trying to get back to his feet, trying to release his hold. Can he do it? So far, so good. Now Joe, Snapman, take down of his own. And he might look for a side headlock or something. Well, he's got the arm, he's got to wrap it uh, around his own arm there. Put pressure on the elbow of Rusev. So now Joe trying to grind down Rusev. And that's a good strategy. You try and take out the arms of Rusev. You take out a lot of his power game. That's one of the keys for Rusev here. That power game generally leads him to a lot of success and a lot of victories come from that. You might remove the accolade as well. That's something that I'm sure he's quite interested in trying to do. Rusev now gets Joe. Back in the middle of the ring. Here we go. Cover now. Rusev. Can he get this victory on Joe? The shoulder's up again. So right now, this one is right in the balance. It could go either way. Both men just trying to find their feet, find their grounding, and try and wear each other down and set up for something big towards the end. Joe now. He's set in the corner. Rusev slowly but surely coming along. A big kick to the midsection there on Joe. Down he goes. Rusev falls up with a few more as well. Stomping away on Joe, grabs a hold of Joe and puts him down as well. Turning that into a power bomb as well. Rusev now a chance. Can he use this to capitalize? He's got the momentum. He's gonna try and test his luck here. Can this be enough to put Joe away? Not quite though, as he'll kick out the count of two. This one remains alive right now. It rests in the balance. A roar or SmackDown get this victory. Joe countering with a strike of his own there. Now Lana. Again distracting Joe. Joe's going to stop getting distracted because it's going to really come back to bite him here. Another time he's been distracted. And again, Rusev taking advantage. Now Joe back to his feet. Rusev lining him up. Here it comes. 
The super kick right there to Joe. He's out. Raw's going to do it. Rusev's going to do it. No, the shoulder's up by Samoa Joe. Just barely getting it up, but keeping this match alive for SmackDown. This match is truly the difference between a great and a terrible draft. You can have five picks, which means, yes, you can go for a big name. But you can also try and boost up some of the weaknesses. Perhaps get a new tag team. Get a couple of guys around that US title scene for Raw, for example. This is where our GM have a bit more flexibility to their advantage. Whereas SmackDown, if they only get three picks, they've only got three picks to really go for their biggest names when they may need a tag team or a few up and coming stars of their own to come to their brand and be a part of it. This is the risk that SmackDown will have to take. They need to make sure that they use all three of their picks to their advantage. Joe kicks out again there. All three of their picks, if they only get three, they have to make sure that they cash in and get three of the very best stars available for them and really try and hurt Raw as much as they possibly can. Raw, for the other hand, you know, they could use two picks, three picks to try and get some main event talent, maybe pick up a tag team, maybe pick up a couple of guys to compete against Nakamura for that US Championship. You just don't know. They have a lot more decisions that they can make, a lot more flexibility, as we said. Every pick right now is so, so crucial. SmackDown and Raw both know that the winner of this one gets that one extra pick. It looks like Raw's gonna get four already. One more makes five. SmackDown just need this pick so badly to even things up. They don't wanna lose two extra guys to Raw. That's the last thing they really want. It's bad enough they're already gonna lose a guaranteed three. To lose five, well, that could really ruin every ounce of momentum they've ever built up because their, their roster will be depleted. It'll be shot. Joe now has Rusev up and takes him down again. Spins him around. Rusev planted down and a chance now for Joe to capitalize. Will he do it? Going to get Rusev up again. Maybe going to try and go for it again, perhaps. Snapmare takedown. And again, trying to wear down Rusev. We'll work on that up. Keep that pressure going. And not a bad idea from Joe. Trying to... Test Rusev here, see if he's got what it takes to break free of it and keep himself in this matchup. The longer this one goes, I, I don't know. I mean, the longer this one goes, maybe he'll favor Rusev. Might test the, the endurance of Samoa Joe. How much can he go? How, how long can he go for? But two big men. You know, I don't think it's really going to favor either of them. I think it could come down to one more big move. The super kick didn't do it for Rusev. Maybe if he can try it again, it might work a second time. We don't know. Joe, he wants that muscle buster. We know that. They can also launch her around the ring and do some devastating damage, perhaps just like that, into the suplex. That one picking him up and spearing him down into the mat. Lana distracting Joe again. This has got to stop for Joe. This time, Rusev, though, I don't think is going to take advantage. Rusev still dazed. He's still trying to find out where the hell he is. Joe now from behind. Hits a German. Might be looking for the trifecta. There's two. The full Nelson. Here comes the third. The German suplex. This could be it. Shoulders down. Rusev in trouble. Where's that destruction ladder? She should have done it because Joe sneaks away with the win. Joe has just survived. Well, he just barely won that one. Rusev hit with three suplexes in a row. The trifecta making it very difficult to kick out. And that is going to be it for Rusev, which means SmackDown gets the extra pick. Raw, we assume, will have four. SmackDown will have four. And things are all tied up. And yet again, SmackDown wins a brand new versus brand match Samoa Joe knocks off Rusev a big victory oh oh it's Bray Wyatt Bray Wyatt's here and he's taken down Joe we knew Bray Wyatt had a some beef to settle with Joe he had a score to settle he's not through with Joe yet he's waited until Smackdown won the match at least there it is the sister Abigail Samoa Joe take it out by the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt.
Earlier tonight, we found out who will be safe from the draft for Monday Night Raw. Now it's time to find out SmackDown safe superstars. First up, The Undertaker. Daniel Bryan, the two men who compete in our next matchup for the World Championship. Randy Orton, we saw him in the pre-show. He's safe. And the White family, the entire White family, Bray, Braun, Harper, Rowan, they are all safe. And of course, we knew this one already. Samoa Joe, officially safe from the draft. Those five superstars cannot be drafted from Raw, and they will be staying on the blue brand going forward. The first of our huge main event matches. It is our World Heavyweight Championship match. And here comes our champion, Kevin Owens. A controversial champion, but you cannot deny how good he has been. A champion since WrestleMania. A championship reign that has spanned the course of 28 weeks, just four weeks short of the greatest championship reign in Universe Mode history behind Brock Lesnar, who held the title for 32 weeks. If Owens can make it through our next pay-per-view TLC, without a doubt, the greatest champion in Universe Mode history. Arguably already is the greatest champion in Universe Mode history, but he will have that record as the longest reigning champion to brag and boast about, which I'm sure he would love to have. But many say tonight is going to be his night. His body is breaking down. He's been champion for seven months. He's beaten the very best of the best. And tonight he comes up against two of the best in one match, in one night. The first of his opponents, here he comes. Daniel Bryan, former Mr. Money in the Bank. And unfortunately... And Hell in a Cell, he had his title match ruined. Tonight, gets his rematch for the World Championship. But he'll have to deal with not only Kevin Owens, but the man who cost him the Money in the Bank matchup, The Undertaker. So The Undertaker ruined the cash in. We'll show you that clip in a moment. Daniel Bryan, very popular with the fans. We know that many of the fans very, very disappointed to not see him win that World Championship. Many believe tonight may be his last chance, perhaps ever. Here comes perhaps one of the greatest of all time. One of the very best we've seen here in Universe Mode. A legend. An icon. The Undertaker. The Phenom, the Dead Man, he is here. He served a well, what we thought was going to be a one month suspension after what he did at Hell in a Cell. First of all, let's take a look at the cash-in. Brian hitting the running knee on Kevin Owens. We thought right there and then, that's going to be it. Owens just went through Hell in a Cell. There was no way he was kicking out of that. Undertaker, though, came in and broke it up. Threw Owens out of the ring. Hit the tombstone on Daniel Bryan. Undertaker stating that his reasons for attacking Brian and breaking that one up is because he wanted to be the one to beat Kevin Owens. He wanted to be the one to end Owens' reign. He didn't want anyone else to do it. He felt as though he could still do it. He felt as though, despite losing in Hell in a Cell, that he still has enough in the tank to get it done. Tonight gets his chance. Tonight he meets Brian, his arch nemesis right now. I'll tell you this. Daniel Bryan is absolutely livid with The Undertaker. Kevin Owens, he just wants to survive one more night. The Undertaker, he served a suspension after putting his hands around the throat of our SmackDown General Manager Edge. After Hell in a Cell, Undertaker barged into the GM's office. He put his hands around Edge's throat, demanded another match. With well, that very championship that you can see on the screen right now, he wanted this match badly. He was willing to nearly risk his career to get one. And Edge, well, he had no choice. It was really, you know, he could risk injury if uh, he said no. So he gave The Undertaker a shot. But uh, the next week on SmackDown, he told the dead man to take a hike. See you later. But the dead man showed up regardless, made his presence known, as we saw on SmackDown. A couple of weeks ago, he took everyone out, clean house. He got through security, and he hasn't been able to get through it since of Titan security. But his suspension is over tonight, and here he comes. Coming for the World Championship. This one's underway. The Undertaker and Brian get their hands on one another early on. Undertaker would love to get rid of Brian from this situation. Take him out of the equation. Attempted suplex. Brian countering, though, a bit earlier in the matchup to be, to be attempting that. Kevin Owens now. Gonna take one of his own. He'll get the Undertaker. 
And now Brian going to return the favour. One for you and one for you. Brian with a suplex now meets the clothesline of Owens, clubbing him, taking him down. So triple threat rules here tonight. Of course, the champion does not have to be pinned. What a way to go out. The champion, Kevin Owens, won't have to get pinned to lose his championship and and end perhaps the greatest reign we've ever seen in universe mode as champion. That would be a heart, <laughs> heartbreaking way to go out, but many want to see Owens lose that championship. I've been seeing your comments. I've been seeing what you guys have been saying, the, the responses and the remarks about Kevin Owens. Many of you cannot wait for someone to beat this man as Owens taking down Brian into a spine buster. STO there by The Undertaker. Down goes Owens as well. But Kevin Owens, he stands firmly. He keeps on saying that he is the best. He is the best there ever has been. Undertaker, Brian, they have something to say about that for sure. Daniel Bryan still chasing his first world championship here in Universe Mode. Undertaker has been a multiple time champion. Owens just the one reign, but I'll tell you what, if you only win it once, but you hold it for a record breaking time, that is all you need. Kevin Owens has proved that he is without a doubt the best. You cannot deny that. I mean, we've ran through the list of names he's beaten in the past over and over and over, but honestly, you know, you look at it. You know, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, John Cena, Undertaker, Daniel Bryan, Alberto Del Rio. The, the list goes on and on and on. It's just incredible the amount of great names this guy has beaten. CM Punk, throw him in there as well. Kevin Owens, without a doubt, has impressed me more than anyone else I've ever seen throughout the series. His reign has been absolutely unbelievable let's be honest those names are ridiculous he solidified himself as one of the greats here in universe mode but is that rain about to end here tonight undertaker looking for a bit of old school here on daniel bryan got that wrist he's now walking on the ropes here it comes old school there to bryan with a shot to the back there some more deadly strikes now to kevin owens as well a great pure strike of the undertaker we know that Owens trying to go for the scoop slam. Going to meet the DDT instead by The Undertaker. Brian has Undertaker. And there you go. Tossing The Undertaker to the other side of the ring. Owens back to his feet. Brian might be going for a cover. No, decided against it. Probably a good decision. Owens right there to break it up regardless. Owens, a lot of talk about his body. You know, we've, we listed all those guys he's beaten. But you can't beat all those names without it taking a toll to your body. You can't beat all those historic names, go through hell in a cell type matches, extreme rule matches, all these hellacious matches he's had to deal with. You can't go through them all without your body wearing and breaking down on you. And it's no secret that Kevin Owens is currently dealing and suffering that. He's got a lot of bruised limbs. He's in a lot of pain. He is really struggling sometimes to really get going. And sometimes he can barely get to his feet at times, but he continues to dig deep and fight. And that's his thing. Fight Owens, fight. He keep, continues to keep on fighting no matter what the situation he has to deal with. Cover now by Brian. Can't get it. Undertaker breaks it up again. A familiar sight that is, isn't it? Undertaker now picks up Brian. And what about that? That was done with brute force and power. And Brian absolutely launched into the mat. The thing about Kevin Owens, as you can see right here, he has a chance to utilize these outside resources like that steel chair. Owens tried to use the steel chair there on the Daniel Bryan, and it looks as though it has disappeared into thin air. I mean, is Bray Wyatt in this match? Or, I mean, Undertaker using some of his magic there? I don't know, but um, someone's using magic around here. That, cha that chair's gone. I don't know where it's gone. And uh, now there's a... A sidewalk slam there by The Undertaker on Kevin Owens. A cover here by Brian. And another break up there. I'm not sure what uh, Daniel Bryan's trying to do there. Obviously trying to go for the cover, but not really going to work. And now again, Undertaker. That is, that's just devastating when he does that, isn't it? Owens, he thinks he may have Brian here. Undertaker breaks it up again. Undertaker, happy to keep on doing that. Owens, just trying to see if he can get lucky. Really, because that's a bit of a dumb move to really try and pin your opponent when you, the third man is standing right by you watching what you're doing. Uh, not the best decision to make, but uh, just trying to be a little cheeky, I guess, and try and go for it. Brian now has Undertaker up. Look out. Going to spin him around. 
Undertaker spun around here by Brian. And off of his feet he goes. Now hooking the leg. The referee in position, a little slow, can't even get to the count thanks to Kevin Owens, who will break that up. Owens now after Daniel Bryan with a kick to the midsection there. Bryan, Undertaker coming along. Chance for a double team here and stand on the sidewalk slam. Owens pretty happy about that. Look out from Hine. The legs wrapped around the head of Owens and now some big elbow strikes by the dead man as well on Kevin Owens. Leaving him in big trouble. Back to his feet now. Owens coming after the Undertaker. Undertaker though can't quite connect there. Owens with the counter. Cover now by Brian. Now just think right now for Owens, the best thing for him might just be to stay the hell out of everybody's way. Just kind of leave these two guys, leave Brian and Undertaker to beat each other up. If he truly is broken down in some trouble, as a Michinoku driver there by Kevin Owens, if he truly is in some trouble, then look, he's going to have to kind of get himself out of there. Cover now by the dead man. Kevin Owens just kind of taking a bit of a walk. Lay outside of the ring for a little bit. Keep an eye on the action just in case. But let Brian and Undertaker sort their issues out. We know there's some big bad beef between the two of them. Why not exploit that? Owens doesn't seem to be really going after it right now. He wants to get in there and fight. But if he gets in there and fights, and he comes off worse for wear, that's him gone. But if he kind of reserves some of the fuel in the tank for later, then he has a chance to come back and, and uh, use everything he's got left to keep this title. Undertaken down into the corner by Brian. Here it comes. No, Undertaker countering. Brian. Oh, Owens in the way there. Brian now. Here it comes. Flying with the elbow strike. Down goes the Undertaker. Chance now for Brian to really take advantage here. Here comes these kicks. And oh, Owens putting an end to that. And going to go for the cover. Let's be honest, that's not going to happen. But Kevin Owens. Could have sat back and watched those kicks connect to the dead man, then gone after Brian, but instead, not even giving Brian the, <laughs> not even allowing him the option to kick the Undertaker there. Taking away some of his offense, Undertaker now. He's kind of ruining the opportunity for Brian to take advantage here. The yes lock. But, come on, let's be honest, that's never going to happen with the Undertaker standing right there. Probably a poor decision there by Brian. Wasting that opportunity there for nothing, really. Undertaker just getting in the way, not allowing either of these guys to really get themselves going. He's just blocking and breaking everything up here. Owens, elbow to the Undertaker. Brian and Undertaker fighting over who gets to take out Kevin Owens. Undertaker will do it though with a DDT. Now it's left for Brian and Taker to sort their differences out. Oh, trying to get the full Nelson. He's connected. Shoulders down. No, a kick out. Didn't quite get the entire Nelson, but. He certainly got the his arms wrapped around Undertaker's and put the pressure on and straight into the cover. A good decision. Didn't get the victory though. Owens was dazzled and dazed. He had no idea. Suplex by Brian. He had no idea what was going on. Undertaker now. Oh, again, he's done that so many times. Just slamming down Brian with such brute force and authority. Owens trying to crawl to Brian. And a desperation cover, let's be honest. Undertaker in complete control. Searching for yet again another title reign here on SmackDown. He's held the championship for a couple times here. Last held it. Over a year ago. Undertaker taken out now. Brian can't get it though. Undertaker lost the world title. Back at Night of Champions last year. Suplex now by Owens. He's been searching for the championship ever since. He's had to overcome the likes of Sting, Chris Jericho. To get to this path. And now been gunning for Kevin Owens for the last few months. Without much luck. Undertaker now in the corner. Countering that. An elbow to Owens. Brian and Owens both receiving some of that. Undertaker now has Brian up. Tried to pick him up for the slam, but Brian from behind. The back of the head of the Undertaker slammed into the mat. And a German suplex there. Owens, last man. Well, I thought he was going to say last man on his feet. Just barely on his feet. Undertaker crawling for the cover. Not going to happen. 
Well, it seems as though these guys are just trying anything right now. All three of them are so desperate to win this matchup. Brian, he's been chasing the world title for years now in universe mode. Undertaker, over a year himself. Owens, just so desperate to keep his title reign going. Any slight chance of victory, they're going to go for it. No matter if their opponent is wait waiting and watching to break the cover up, they don't care. They're just going for it tonight because they're so desperate to win here. Undertaker. Vertical suplex with some nice hang time as well. Some of the blood rushing into the brain of Brian. Undertaker now crawling to Brian. Thought he was going to go for the cover. Not going to get it. Owens and Taker both back to their feet. But Owens coming after Brian. Taker gets Owens off of his feet though. Brian on one knee trying to get back up. Giving a bit of a chance for a breather himself, Brian. Doesn't have to get to his feet anytime soon. Let Owens and Taker battle it out. Maybe now's a good time to get back to your feet and break this up. Counter two and a half. Taker getting close. Brian still no signs of getting up. Still trying to recover here. Taker happily beating up Kevin Owens here. Owens is getting a fight. That's what he wants. And the dead man is certainly giving him a run for his money. Turns his attention now to Brian. Brian slammed down. Daniel Brian just couldn't get up. He tried. Now out of desperation, he's got to get up because Kevin Owens is coming for him. But Brian with a nice counter. Reversing that and now into a DDT as well. Nice sequence. Brian heading to the top. Undertaker may have something to say about that. And Brian struck right to the face and to the outside of the ring. You're not flying off that top rope anytime soon, the dead man. He's implying. Oh, Taker bounced off the steel ring post. No DQ, of course. If these guys want to use those steel steps, use a steel chair, what is available to them, they can. Prime with the submission, but it's to the outside of the ring. It's not really going to count. Taker, though. Look out. Countering. Didn't try, try to turn that into something big there. Couldn't quite connect. Brian able to survive there. Into the apron, though. Taker is going to get Kevin Owens and drive him into the steel steps. And now he's got the steel steps himself. We said a moment ago, it's all legal. And Taker's going to try and take advantage. Brian striking him, not allowing him to do so. The steel steps still in play. Kevin Owens could try and use them. Brian could try and use them. Someone has the option, the, the opportunity to go for it. Owens into the steel steps and back into the ring. Taker, ringside barricade. Brian really trying to get something going here for himself. A big move on one of his opponents to really get himself a lot of momentum and some control in this match and some confidence. Taken out. Look out! There's his patented leg drop! On the apron to the outside. Owens has got something big in mind. Undertaker though. He's not going to allow him to do it. Instead, he's got something big in mind. And it's the last ride! The last ride to Kevin Owens. Brian, though, no way in hell is he going to let The Undertaker win this world title tonight. Not after what he did at Hell in a Cell to him. Trying to get Undertaker out of the picture. Wouldn't that be a disaster if Undertaker steals Brian's title opportunity? Gets inserted into the triple threat. And then goes on to win. That would crush Daniel Bryan. I don't think he could come back from that. Let's be honest. Owens now. Look out. Package pile driver. Real trouble now for The Undertaker. Into the cover. Good night. Bryan though. Able to break that up. Undertaker though. He could be out for a while here. Look out. Went for a tooth. The well slam instead. Decided to get him. And turn it into like a white noise that we saw from Sheamus early on. Slamming down Brian, putting some more pressure on the back of, and the neck region of Daniel Bryan. Bryan, he wanted these kicks earlier. He's finally going to get them now. Big kicks now to Owens right in the chest and the gut. How about one to the face as well? Undertaker's going to break it up. Owens could be out of it. He could be knocked out right now. Seems as though he's getting back to his feet quickly. Swept off his feet now is Bryan. One of these men have to win this match. Walk away as world champion. Who will it be? I, I can't pick a winner right now. 
everyone has really got their best moves in. Everyone's getting closer and closer. Undertaker sitting right up for what we can assume might be the tombstone. A swinging neckbreaker into the knee by Owens Undertaker. Now suplexing Brian away. Kevin Owens. Thought he was going to head to the top of the rope. There's no way! His set trying to fly over the top. And I just felt as though he's far too... Just too far away. There's no way he was going to connect there. You think, I think he got a little bit of it. Not much at all. Certainly came off worse for wear. Now the Undertaker sending him up for the tombstone. No! Owens countering into a tombstone of his own! Brian back to his feet. Can he break it up? Well, I think Brian got in the way of the referee anyways. The referee decided to break it up. Owens now. Here comes another package pile, pile driver. Taker. Keeps on attacking Owens here. He's going to head to the top. Brian got the cover though. Owens underneath the ropes. It doesn't matter. Taker now. Off the top of the rope. Landing on Owens. Owens is taking a beating right now. Brian setting up Owens. Maybe you're going to look for that yes lock again. He's got it in. Locked in. Here we go. Submission is in. Will Owens tap? No, he won't. Undertaker getting up. Brian knew he was coming. Broke the hold. So the Undertaker couldn't take advantage. Modified German suplex there by Daniel Bryan. Undertaker back to his feet though. So is Owens. Owens is watching on. Watching these two men come after one another. Owens can watch on as Brian hits another suplex there on, on the Undertaker. Kevin Owens shot to the midsection of Brian. Now another one. We know what's coming next. Pop up powerbomb. The cover hooks the leg. Undertaker trying to get to his feet. He can't get up in time. It's over. Owen survives yet again another night and is still your world champion. How the hell does he do it? A battle, a war between three of the best. It could have gone either way. Undertaker, if he gets it one second quicker, he breaks it up. This match continues. But it is those one second moments that can be the difference between being a world champion and not. Owen's pinpointed his opportunity he knew that was his perhaps his only chance he got it took it and won it oh well, what the hell sis could it be the beast brock lesnar what is he doing here brock lesnar is here at survivor series we haven't seen him in months lesnar's here Brian, he's just trying to get the hell out of here, walking up the ramp, and a belly to belly by Lesnar. Welcome to Suplex City, Daniel Bryan, how about another? Lesnar, punishing Brian, who just lost this match. Lesnar with a third. Sending a statement, Undertaker's in the ring, Owens has got the hell out of there. Taker, he's not backing down from a fight. Big shots there to Lesnar. Trying to stop the beast. But Lesnar, no, has the Undertaker. There's a powerbomb. Picks him up for another. The strength of Lesnar on show. A third. Lesnar takes down the Undertaker. And now, setting him up for the F5. Here it comes. Lesnar back on SmackDown, we can assume. He was a free agent for months. He was originally going to sign with Raw. The contract fell through after the change of management. He's re-signed with SmackDown. He's back, and he's just hit a second F5 to The Undertaker. Lesnar sends a statement to everybody on SmackDown, and he is back, and he is back for blood. Oh boy, Lesnar now, gonna toss the dead man out of the ring. Brock Lesnar is here, Undertaker is out of it. Kevin Owens been hiding in the corner. Now Lesnar wants Owens, wants him in the ring. Kevin Owens talking some smack, Lesnar's ready. Owens is not gonna fight tonight. But perhaps we'll see these two men meet yet again. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event tonight. And there has been a change this one. It was originally scheduled to be a traditional Survivor Series 3 on 3 match. As you can see, AJ Styles coming to the ring all alone. It has now been changed to a gauntlet match where one member of each team will enter the ring to start this one off. And it will be a gauntlet elimination. So obviously, when one of these guys are eliminated, if AJ Styles is eliminated, someone else from his team will come to the ring. And the team with the last man standing will win this match. And of course, the stakes are high. Whoever pins Finn Balor will earn a title shot. AJ Styles, he's in there first. And you can assume Finn Balor's not going to be in there first. So it's going to be hard for him to get that title shot. And he really wants revenge on Finn Balor. And now Finn Balor's kind of got a little lucky. He might not have to face AJ Styles, the one man that he cannot beat. So it looks as though it's going to be Carl Anderson to kick us off here. So just to clear things up here, you guys might be a little confused. So we were originally were going to do a three on three match. There has been a change. Our Raw GM Christian has decided to change things up. And originally, obviously, it was scheduled and this match was created pretty much by the wrestlers themselves. Christian has kind of inserted himself into this one a little bit and changed things up to suit his own liking. So this is going to be a huge main event because there will be two superstars. Every time someone is eliminated, someone else will come down and compete. And every team will keep on going until they have no members of their team left and they have all been eliminated. So it is the Ballot Club. They have Carl Anderson in there right now, taking on AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, and Dolph Ziggler. Styles drew the card where he'll open it up. So a little unlucky there. Maybe he drew the short straw. I don't know. I don't know how they decided it, but he decided that he's going to open things up here. Up against Carl Anderson, who will be one tough opponent for AJ Styles. But AJ Styles has been very, very good. NXT champion he was until Finn Balor distracted him and cost him the championship. AJ Styles now with a headlock applied. Trying to get Anderson back to his feet. And there's a knee right to the head as well. Down Anderson goes. Into the DDT as well. I think we can assume that Gallows will be coming out next for the Balor Club. I think there's really no way, no real reason why Finn Balor would come out uh, until the end. Obviously try to protect himself as badly as he possibly can. Trying to avoid having to defend his championship. And as we know, whoever does win this match for, well, I guess, what, what could we call these guys? I don't know. We don't really have a team captain, I suppose. We'll just say Styles, Ziggler, and Rollins. Whoever wins this match for that team will earn a title shot. One-on-one, -on -one, fair match, no club involved. Nobody will come out to distract or interfere or anything like that. It will be a fair one-on-one -on -one match. That has That's what Finn Balor has promised us. Now, will he go back and he's promised big possibility that he may? But um, we have to just go off that uh, promise that he's given us there. And hopefully he does the right thing. Right now, Anderson's going to pick up Styles into a suplex. All the history between Styles and between Styles, Gallows, and Anderson. They've uh, had the time in Japan together. They've even become friends. And Styles now into the neckbreaker. Styles now. Him to wear down Anderson here, working the leg. So for AJ Styles, he's going to have to try and end this match as quick as he, really as he possibly can, and get on to the next opponent. Styles now went for a attempted frog splash, can't connect. He's going to have to go back to the drawing board. And obviously, this is really a battle survival. You want to talk about a Survivor Series? This is it. You have to try and outlast three opponents and survive all the way to the end to get yourself a title shot. That is truly a battle and that is not going to be easy at all three very very good opponents Anderson Gallows they are as good as it gets perhaps the best team right now that don't have the titles and obviously Finn Balor our champion he is just absolutely unbelievable right now the only man has really gotten the better of him has been AJ Styles which is a little wonder a little I mean a little baffling that he's not competing against Balor that he's not coming in third and we would assume that he may get his hands on Balor we can only guess that it was a random draw that he's a little unlucky because I think for his team to win tonight, I th would have thought that um, Styles would have had to come up against Balor. Look out, there's a spinning powerbomb. Sit out powerbomb and spinning around for extra emphasis as well. 
brute power and force into that one. Styles in some trouble here. Anderson with an elbow to follow it up. Good start here for Anderson. What a way it would be to start this one off for the Ballot Club by knocking off and eliminating AJ Styles right off the bat. That would be huge, and that would really set back Rollins and Ziggler. The first elimination is probably the most crucial point in the match. If Gallows and Anderson and Ballot can have a one-up lead, then they are right in the driver's seat, and it's going to be all smooth sailing from there, you would assume. Tempted right hand there by Anderson. A miss though. Styles now has Anderson up. Look out. Plants set him down and lands on the knee of Styles. The back of his neck landing on his knee. Styles now. Springboard moonsault off the second rope. Executed perfectly. Landing on Anderson. And AJ Styles perhaps trying to quicken the pace here. These guys both know they need to eliminate each other ASAP. Anderson now into the cutter. The Fireman's carry. Spun him out into the cutter. Might be it now for Styles. No, a kick out of two. Anderson has used that cutter really, really well throughout his short-term tenure here in the WWE. They have been deadly and has picked him up a lot of victories. Styles wearing down the arm of Anderson as well. AJ Styles hasn't had to do too much as of yet, but any longer, and it's going to be really difficult for him to get through the next opponent, which we can assume will be Gallows, to even get his hands on Balor. I mean, by the time he gets to Finn Balor, he may have nothing left in the tank. Styles off the knee and into the neck breaker. AJ Styles now setting up Carl Anderson, perhaps for that Styles clash. Styles now. Hang on, no. Turns into the Calf Crusher. Locked in. Styles, Calf Crusher. Not going to get it, though. Release the hold. But putting the pressure on Anderson regardless. May be able to keep him down for the three count. Here we go now. Hooking the leg. This may be it here. Now a comfortable kick out at one. Didn't get the Calf Crusher in long enough to sustain, en sustain enough damage there to Anderson to keep him down and put any more pressure on him. Anderson back to his feet now. The Ballot Club's own Carl Anderson. He's had many battles with Rollins and Ziegler. Not too many with Styles as of late. Styles suplexing down Anderson. The back of Anderson just being driven straight into the mat. And some good power behind it as well from Styles. In control now. Styles has a chance here. Take Anderson down. Finish him off here. Move on to the next opponent. Got that arm locked in. Trying to make him tap out again. Anderson scrambling. Trying to do anything to get out of us. And he does. He counters and reverses. That arm was being pulled back and really wrenched there. Trouble there for Anderson. But he got out of it. Now Anderson himself looks for a suplex. And just slams down AJ Styles. Styles are immediately back to his feet. Doing well. Anderson, look out. Anderson taken down again by AJ Styles. Styles, though, you can see the wear and tear on the body already. He's had some big matches in the last month that he's had to overcome. And perhaps it's starting to show some signs here of that wear and tear as Anderson now takes advantage of it. Anderson has Styles right in position. Here he comes. Oh, tried to launch himself there at Styles, but Styles avoiding. Getting out of the way. Now back into the calf crusher again. Locked in again, but I think his foot is on the rope. His foot was on the rope. He rolled through too far. And his foot was on the rope, and Anderson survives. Now again, another kick out at two. Styles just, just can't put him away at the moment. Trying his best, but not working. A drop kick now to the back. Styles needs to win this right now if he's got any chance of becoming WWE Champion someday. Styles sweeping Anderson off of his feet, taking him down face first. Rolls him into position, heading to the top of the rope now. AJ Styles, here he comes. What's he got planned here? Styles, here he comes. No, there it is. A cutter. Off the top of the rope, and Anderson 
strikes and Styles is out of it. He's been eliminated. Wow. AJ Styles has been eliminated and the perfect start for the Bala Club. Here comes his next opponent, Seth Rollins. But wow, what a start here tonight for the Bala Club. AJ Styles, perhaps the biggest threat in this match to their champion. Finn Balor is gone before he can even eliminate anybody. That is huge. Wow, I cannot believe it. AJ Styles is absolutely livid. And the Battle Club have the perfect start. Now the pressure is truly on Seth Rollins. Dolph Ziggler to follow, obviously. So Seth Rollins coming in now, trying to clean things up a little bit. Can he take down Anderson quickly? Seth Rollins enters the ring, but immediately Anderson gets a hold of him. Rollins can't really get going here. Anderson gets a hold of him. Had him in the fireman's carry and slammed him down. And now, Anderson continuing where he left off with AJ Styles. And now doing the same to Rollins. He got in the ring and immediately, Anderson just struck straight away. Not letting Rollins even get a half a chance. Now into that spinning sit-out powerbomb. And again, Anderson, you can see he's feeling the effects of this one. After going through a battle with Styles to start things off, now he has to try and put down Rollins. If he can go two from two here, it will be all but over. A three-on-one advantage. There's no way Rollins can come back from that, you would assume. Rollins has to get an elimination here. If he gets eliminated next by Gallows, that'll be okay. At least it's two-on-one. There's half a chance Ziggler can get it done. Rollins, he's, he's got to try and probably take out the next two guys. You would assume those knees off the ropes. Rollins, really effective there. Anderson dazed and stunned a little bit. Now Rollins, that flying forearm into the corner. Striking down Anderson. Rollins now in position. Curve stomp. That's it. It's over. Anderson looking up at the lights. He's off with the fairies. Looking at the heavens. Praying for help. He's not going to get any. It's over. Rollins makes quick work of Carl Anderson. And they're back in it. It's two all now. That's all that remains. Rollins. And what we can assume will be Gallows. Oh, yep. Here he comes. Two men left. One man eliminated from both teams right now. Here comes the big man, the muscle, Luke Gallows. The enforcer for the Battle Club, the destroyer, the big man. And how good has he been? Very, very impressive. And he is going to be one tough man to overcome. There's nobody, nobody the size of him. That's the thing. That's the issue that uh, Rollins and Ziggler face. They're nowhere near the size of this man. If he can manhandle you and really get the better of you, there's no one who can really overcome that. The size, power, and strength would be way too much for anyone on Rollins and Ziggler to handle. And straight away, he's in the ring and strikes down Rollins. So the Battle Club don't really bother to wait around for the referee to kick things off again. They're just happy to strike and immediately start this thing off. Gallows now in the corner, Rollins. Rollins, uh-oh, making quick work of him, perhaps. Looking for that buckle bomb in the corner, connecting. Well, Gallows, welcome to the match. He's in trouble here already. The cover. Gallows. Power bomb to the corner. And a late kick out of two. Rollins nearly pulling the fast one. They're on Gallows after Gallows tried to do the same to Rollins. That buckle bomb, unsuccessful, though. Gallows now from behind. Rollins, look out. Taken down again, suplexing down Seth Rollins. Nicely executed there by Gallows, who's trying to work his way back into it. A tough start for him here. But he's lining Rollins up already. He's got something big in mind. He's got Rollins by the throat, picks him up, slams him down. And now, in that sit out spine buster, and can't quite get him though. The shoulder is up. Rollins hasn't really suffered too much damage as of yet. And 
it has shown been able to kick out of that not many men can that's spine buster it's very effective gallows now turns his attention to the announce table I'm not sure if this is the best idea could be uh, make a break for him if he goes through it it's gonna be tough going from there on but if he can get Seth Rollins through it that might be the one thing he needs to do to beat Rollins here Rollins a two-time WWE champion here in universe mode he's been at the pinnacle and has beaten the very very best including one of the very best title reigns I've ever seen here in universe mode that uh, began last year ended early this year Gallows now enters the ring Snapman now by Rollins and into the headlock as well so just trying to stop Gallows from really getting him, getting himself going here and stopping any momentum that he had he's really looking towards that announce table trying to really utilize that potentially for a huge move that could put Rollins down and out now Rollins look out into the SDO head first down goes Gallows trouble now for him and now into the super kick he was on his knees and he struck right on the chin could be it right now for Gallows and he can kick out though Jeez, it would have been tough for Balor to have to beat Rollins and Ziggler to win this one for his team Gallows must eliminate Rollins here to help his leader have the best possible chance of winning now Rollins lining up Gallows hit the suplex lining him up now and here it comes a second curb stomp yes he can get up that high the big man is down curb stomp good night he can look up the lights as well and there's no one here to save him Rollins goes back to back eliminations a big sequence there from Rollins perhaps getting his team back into it and now within a winning chance here comes the champion Bella the leader of the Bella club in this situation right now it feels like we are witnessing the boss after 10 stages of model combat this man comes out he's bigger he's better than he's better than everyone Bella might not be bigger than everyone but I tell you what he might be better than everybody this man is as good as it gets here on raw and the Bella club if they can only rely on one man you'd want to rely on this man it is their leader their man their champion Finn Balor who approaches the ring now taking his time just kind of letting Rollins wait dictate things on his own terms not a bad way to go about it Rollins fresh off a back-to-back -back victory yes Balor could get in there and try and take advantage of any fatigue that he might be facing but Balor's just happy to play some mind games take his time get to the ring on his own terms and begin this match the way he wants to your leader of the Valor Club your champion if he gets pinned tonight whoever pins him will get a title shot one-on-one -on -one against Finn Balor here we go these two are underway they lock up now after a couple strikes Balor now has Rollins in the corner the referee all over this making sure oh cheap shot there by Rollins plenty of animosity between these two Lots of history between Rollins and Ziggler and Balor. And we're going to see it all come into fruition right now into this matchup. Shot there by Balor. If Rollins can beat Finn Balor, he'll get a one-on-one -on -one match for the championship. Rollins has already beaten two men. Can he beat a third? It's unlikely. But stranger things have happened. Rollins, he is good. But is he that good? We're about to find out. How much has Rollins got left in the tank? Balor's going to be able to try and capitalize here. Balor now. Look out. Oh, into a brain buster there by Finn Balor. Rollins is taken down. Balor getting Rollins back to his feet now. What's he got planned next? Nothing because Rollins with the counter. Headbutting Balor back. But Finn Balor though. Look out. Sweeping Rollins off his feet. And the champion just getting into the swing of things here. Starting to warm up here Finn Balor. Rollins has been in there for a while now. Beaten Anderson, beaten Gallows. 
And surprisingly, he beat the big man very quickly. I was shocked by that. I thought Gallows would be in there for a lot longer and perhaps even eliminate Rollins. But Seth Rollins good enough to beat both members of the Ballot Club's tag team, Gallows and Anderson. Now it's down to their single star, their man, Balor. Who's putting up a strong fight now to Rollins. Not letting Rollins dictate the terms of this one. Rollins, though. Going to go for another suplex. A bridging style of suplex on the Finn Balor. And now Rollins going to get him back to his feet. Shrugs him off, though, does Balor. Uppercut there to Rollins. Finn Balor now. Grabs a hold of Rollins, trying to hit the elbow. Rollins countering back with a knee. And now... Rollins, he's trying to find out what he wants to do now. And he swung his leg back out and drove Finn Balor right into the mat head first and the body as well, receiving some of the treatment as well. Rolls up with a couple more stomps and now going to try and see if he can put Balor away here. No chance the champion's going to bow out that quickly. But some pressure applied regardless, and that's what Rollins, I think, has to do. Keep the pressure on Finn Balor. Leader of the Balor Club. In a bit of trouble perhaps. Right hand there by Rollins. Balor now in the corner. Balor countering with a big shot to the face of Rollins. Balor now. Gonna pick up Rollins and hit him a snap suplex of his own. Snapping down Rollins. Keeping the pressure on. Rollins is in the corner. Balor, what's he got planned now? Uh-oh. He's in position. He's ready to strike. He's ready to launch himself at Rollins into the corner. The big double kick into the corner. And now picks him up, slams him down, turns into a power bomb. Rollins in big trouble here. Hooks the leg. But he'll kick out at one. I really feel like Balor should have gone for the coup de grace there. Rollins was in perfect position. I'm not sure if Balor will get another chance of that now. Balor making an early mistake here. Could be trouble now if he can't rectify it. There's a sit-out powerbomb. That's nicely done. Now he rolls. Rollins over. And now he's in position. Well, he just wanted to hit one more big move. And set him up. Coup de grace. Incoming. Connects. Rollins, can he kick out and keep this one alive? Trouble for Rollins. It's all over for Seth. Finn Balor evens the score. There's one man left for both teams. One man remains, and it's the show of Dolph Ziggler. Seth Rollins is out of here. And it's Ziggler versus Balor to close this one out. If Ziggler can win, He'll finally get a rematch for the WWE Championship one-on-one. -on -one. If he loses, the Ballot Club win and perhaps continue to take over and dominate Raw for the foreseeable future. So here we go, the final matchup and our huge clash between the Ballot Club and Roland Ziggler and Styles. Ziggler's in the corner now and there will be a definitive winner because the final matchup has been confirmed to be a no disqualification finish. So no matter what, there will be a fair and square winner in this one. So no disqualification between Balor and Ziggler, which means they could go to the outside, use whatever the hell they need to get this win. Ziggler now drives Balor into the corner, whipping him through. Going to try and do it again to the other corner. Trying to wear down the back of Balor. And a big stinger-like splash in the corner there by Dolph Ziggler. A man who held the WWE Championship here in Universe Mode for all of maybe 7 minutes, 10 minutes max. I mean, it was not long at all. Finn Balor cashed in money in the bank, took it all away from him. Ziggler worked for over 6 months to get that championship. And Balor took it all away from him in an instant. Ziggler's been looking for revenge ever since. Balor driven into the steel ring post. Ziggler tried to deliver the boot to the chest of Balor who grabbed a hold of it and shut that down quickly. Balor now driving Ziggler head first in again. And again.
again. The knee now being worked on here by Finn Balor. Finn Balor has kind of terrorized Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins for the last couple of months. They recruited AJ Styles to try and even the score, to try and make things a little easier for them, to try and help them out. Didn't quite work out in this one. AJ Styles quickly eliminated. It's been up to Ziv Ziggler and Rollins to get things done again. Ziggler and Rollins, a huge win over Gallows and Anderson at Hell in a Cell. But they've yet to really beat this man, Finn Balor. This is Ziggler's chance to finally knock off the champion. He's been searching and searching for it, trying to get this win for so long. Now is his chance. A neck breaker by Balor. Ziggler trying to get back to his feet. Balor ready to strike when he does. Ziggler countering, no, with an elbow. Now Balor's got him up. Double knees to the gut. Trouble now for Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler now driven into the corner again. Well, has Finn Balor got planned? Oh boy. Oh no. Finn Balor trying to make short work of Dolph Ziggler. Into the corner with the double kick there. Trouble now for Dolph Ziggler. But Balor tried to turn into the power bomb just like he did the Seth. Didn't work out this time. Ziggler scattered it out. He counted back. Knee to the face now of Balor. And now Ziggler has Balor up. And slams it down to a suplex and kicks up as well. Here we go. Dolph Ziggler getting fired up here. But wait a second. He's headed to the outside. He's got a steal. No, he's got, got a table. All right, that works. Ziggler the table trying to strike Balor with it. And trying to carry that big table and, and strike quickly is never going to really work out. Balor now taking advantage. Wow, that was brutal by Balor. Into... The ring apron with a suplex. Ziggler though still standing. Back to his feet now. Takes Balor off of his feet. Shot to the midsection. Balor now takes down Ziggler again. These two men fight to the outside. No DQ as we know. Balor's making the most of it. Launching Ziggler into the still steps. Trying to follow it up with a double stomp. Couldn't quite connect. Just missed it. Just missed time that a touch. That's okay. Still in control. Ziggler bouncing off the steps again. Balor in complete control. Dominating Dolph Ziggler now. Finn Balor, those deadly strikes as well. Finn Balor could be closing in on winning this match for his club. And oh, a big elbow right there to the throat of Dolph Ziggler. This could be the beginning of the end for Ziggler. His dreams... Could be going up in flames very shortly. DDT by Ziggler. Had to connect that. Big move by Dolph. And that could be a difference maker. The one move he needed to get himself back into this match. And now look out. Here comes these elbows. There's two. There's three. Ziggler's gone for all ten. Ziggler getting himself fired up here. Here he goes. Still going. These deadly strikes. These heart stoppers to Finn Balor. And here it comes again, another one. Deadly elbows onto Finn Balor. The cover now. Can't connect with the three. And now Ziggler wondering what he has to do next. He was going well. Things are working out pretty well for him. Those elbows, they were deadly. But Balor still had enough to kick out. Ziggler now can try and... Oh, look out! Zigzag! That's what he wanted! That's what he needed! Zigzag! Ziggler's going to get himself a title shot! He's going to beat the club! No! Balor with a shoulder up! Thought that was it! Thought Ziggler was going to seal the deal and defeat the Balor club's Finn Balor! Ziggler, no. Got to keep the pressure on. He's got the momentum. He was in complete control. He's got to keep going here. Neck breaker as well. Continue to wear on that neck to help him execute a zigzag of the field. Whoa. What's AJ Styles? AJ Styles is here. Styles into them. Entering the ring. Ziggler, meanwhile, has Balor in the corner stomping away. Working away on Balor. AJ Styles looks as though he's going to come lend a helping hand. Well, he knows how to beat Finn Balor. AJ Styles is here, and he's coming after, what the, what the hell? Styles attacking Ziggler. AJ Styles coming after Dolph Ziggler with these big strikes. Finn Balor watching on. 
What the hell's going on? Styles! Brainbuster there to Dolph Ziggler! What the hell is this? AJ Styles taking out his teammate, his partner. It's no DQ as we know. It's all legal. And now, Styles Clash. Oh my god. AJ Styles has turned on his team. You don't think he's joined the club, do you? You don't think he's done a deal with the devil himself. Finn Balor watching on. He can't believe what just happened. Watching on. And now into the cover. It's over. Styles has turned on his team. And the Balor Club win again. Unbelievable. AJ Styles eliminated early in this match. Perhaps it was deliberate that he wanted to get out quickly to help the club out, help get them the victory. With the Balor Club, they win it again. AJ Styles turns on his team and perhaps has joined the Balor Club. We knew they were recruiting, but we didn't think it would be AJ Styles. Ziggler and Rollins, their dreams once again destroyed thanks to the Balor Club. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Survivor Series tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the pay-per-view. If you did, make sure you do leave a like on this episode. Please, let's try to get as many likes as we possibly can to support the show. Leave a like on this episode. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. And of course, check out our sponsor, Loot Crate, where you can get 10% off by using the code plays. Links to that will be in the description down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, watch the entire show. Make sure you put the word in the comment section down below. Survive. Our last pay-per-view for WWE 2K16 will be TLC, which is our next pay-per-view. There is one to go before we get off to the new game. Hope you guys do check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you all next time.